uh, let's go straight across to uh, Ashok Kumar, Managing Director, LKW Investment Advisors, joining us in our Mumbai studios. Ashok, good afternoon. Good to have you back here on NDTV Profit. Uh, today, of course, is a news-heavy day, but we're going to take a bit of a breath and talk instead about an interesting analysis that you brought to the fore, which is... Uh, essentially going to explode some myths and I'm referring to the S&P indices versus active funds analysis, SPIVA for short. What is the five-year analysis, uh, the SPIVA analysis essentially showing? Yeah, good afternoon to you, Manvi. Uh, at the outset, I think the SPIVA uh, report uh, has said the cat among the pigeons this is something that uh, people who are in the business know about it. But uh, to the outside world, it's, you know, it's, it's as easy as pick up a mutual fund, stay in it for a perpetuity perhaps, and hope for good returns. But if you look at these numbers, you would realize that uh, it takes some uh, effort to separate the men from the boys. If you look at three- and five-year performances, more than 50% of the funds, the large-cap funds we are talking about over here, more than 50% of them have actually performed below the benchmark which is an underperformance very clearly. So now that that's a big number. There's a huge number of funds that are there in the market. And we are again talking of an average. So that includes disastrous performers because it also includes, uh, you know, absolute outperformers. So when the average is below the S&P uh, 100 average, that uh, calls for some retrospection about your choices of mutual funds. You, you need to be careful. You need to be sensible while making those choices. Okay. You probably need an advisor if you aren't equipped yourself. I wanted to pick up on a couple of those points. It's also telling that the underperformance increases over a longer period analysis. So when you're saying five years, the underperformance widens a shock? Uh, in case of this report, I mean, see, uh, at the end of the day, I think different reports with different parameters and different uh, indices or benchmarks would give you different results. But the fact is that a large number of large cap funds based on this study have underperformed. Uh, that does not mean that, uh, you know, returns drop in the longer term. Far from it, if you pick the right fund, they actually grow over the longer term. Most of our studies show that 10-year returns are, uh, you know, a fair go fairly good benchmark, and most of them are close to 20% even as of today. Sure, so, but I was uh, sticking... Know, having... I was sticking to this report because, you know, it's certainly important fodder for investors who've not thought in these terms before. What is this report saying about, you know, mid-cap and small-cap performance? So the mid-cap performances are better. I mean, clearly they are uh, performing better over here because you also are looking at a five-year period. That was a period when there was a lull in the market and the market uh, picked up thereafter. Uh, uh, one more caveat here, Manvi, is that this uh, report is uh, dated up to June 30th. We, we all know that there was severe volatility in the market thereafter. So the, uh, the numbers could have got a little worse. Uh, further buttresses the point that your uh, fund selection has to be, uh, you know, fairly good. Otherwise, you're more likely to land up with the majority, which is 50 to 60 percent, which are underperforming funds. Okay. I'm going to ask one final question related to this report. Uh, you know, just summarize uh, the moral of the story for investors. You've touched upon some of them, but this report and, you know, some of the graphics we showed also says that in this report, they're saying that the debt funds are lagging the equity funds. Net, net, moral of the story for investors who are watching. Yeah, in fact, uh, you know, th that means that the calls that some of the debt fund managers are making on the interest rate uh, scenario and other scenarios on which they, uh, you know, base their investment decisions have gone wrong in uh, recent times. So uh, no comfort there. It's not as easy as moving from equity to debt. Even there, it requires a lot of thought and, uh, you know, uh, selection needs to be superior, which the bottom line here is that it's not as simple as picking anything that is available on the table. The past performance is not necessarily uh, the best indicator. It's one of the important indicators, but not the best indicator. Okay, let's get specific now and talk about uh, LKW Investment Advisors and its view on the Sundram Growth Fund. What is it? What is it? No, it's, it's an interesting fund in the sense that, uh, you know, it, it positions itself as a growth fund. And uh, although it's, uh, you know, it's AUM isn't anything large to write home about, uh, what, what struck me as particularly interesting, one, there has been a change of a fund manager, uh, for whatever reason, uh, the more important thing is that it has an abnormally high turnover ratio. Now, clearly, uh, turnover ratio by itself, turnover, to put it in very simple layman's terms, it's the amount of times that a portfolio gets churned. 
Now, uh, that uh, generates brokerage, brokerage income which goes out of the pocket of the investor finally. So you don't ideally want a very high turnover ratio with the caveat that if the fund is doing well and then there is a turnover ratio, that's fine. Now, this is clearly a fund that is underperformed over, you know, across timelines. If you look at one, three, five or ten years, this fund is underperformed. Uh, so some serious question marks about this fund. It also has a lock-in of about 18 uh, months and you lose 2% if you exit before that. So investors would need to be a little cautious before touching this fund. Moving on to the HDFC balanced fund, Ashok, that's a hold? Yeah, that would be a hold. It's a time-tested fund. It, it's, you know, it's, it's got a fairly large AUM, uh, relatively not too high turnover ratio. Uh, one of the smart things that when you look at what the fund has done in the last one year, they have moved a fair bit. Their exposure of about 40% in mid-caps has been brought down in the last one year to about 26%, which has stood them in good stead in these volatile markets. Now, uh, you know, when you look at this fund, it's, it's been a time-tested performer. It's beaten the benchmark uh, across timelines. So someone looking for a balanced fund with low risk and decent returns, good look at it. It remains a hold. You know, having said that, I think I must add the caveat that as part of a recent tactical reallocation, we, you know, skimmed off some profits of these funds and we would probably re-enter them through the STP route. But typically for a long-term investor, this is one of the funds that uh, they could look at from a long-term perspective. Again, I'm going to move on uh, rapidly, Ashok, uh, because we've just got news that the Coffee Day IPO has been fully subscribed. Uh, the perfect time to actually get your views. Uh, it's the last day of the IPO today, but uh, there are many investors out there who hold off until the end. Uh, so what is uh, your assessment of this uh, company? Yeah, uh, you know, far cry, Manvi, from those days where issues got subscribed within the first few minutes of, uh, you know, opening. Uh, I think these are different times and we are talking of a uh, completely different market scenario. But the fact that it's, uh, you know, been subscribed augurs well for it. Uh, if, if you look at the company, it's clearly betting on its brand equity. It's riding on its brand equity. But a closer look at the RHP, you know, some of the things that obviously stand as a, you know, a sore, uh, stick out like a sore thumb include, number one, the fact that, uh, you know, majority of this issue proceeds won't be going back into business, but will be diverted to pay loans of subsidiary companies. That is number one. Number two, you know, whereas the entire story is being built around the uh, CCD, CCD brand, uh, you know, if you look, again, if you look closely, hardly 30% of the capital employed goes into the coffee retail business. So they have multiple other businesses, many of them unrelated. So 70% comprises that. Uh, the third area of concern for me is the fact that this company has successively posted losses over a long period of time. And there have been about, uh, you know, successively they've been, you know, year after year, they've been closing a large number of coffee kiosks, all of which, uh, you know, uh, makes one wonder whether uh, they're coming out with an IPO at, uh, at a time when there seems to be a sort of stagnation in the business. But clearly they are uh, riding the brand and there seems to be demand, so... No comments on the pricing and, uh, you know, where the stock would end up. But these are red herrings that any investor would need to keep in mind before participating in this IPO.